Okay, so let's start with the session. Good morning to all. Myself Chaitali. I am the host for today's session. Lake House using Azure Data Databricks. So we will start with the introduction about today's session. Today's session is organized by ETC community. Our ETC community is for all who are interested in various emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, cloud, DevOps and many more. To get updates and to know in depth about the technologies we provide, you can follow our meetup groups which is emerging technology community. For that, you just need to install Meetup app on your phone and follow our community. Small code of conduct which you all need to follow. Please note that you can't take screenshot of the presentation and can't do screen recording. If you need the recording, then simply you just have to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will be sharing the recordings on this session on our YouTube channel soon. Also, YouTube channel link will be dropped in the chat box later. Agenda for the session. The session will help you to visualize the importance of data lake in the decision making system. Also make you understand work working with Azure Databricks. Today's speaker for the session is Mr. Chandrasekhar Deshpande. Chandrasekhar sir is working in tech corporate industry for more than 30 years. His core experience is in data related technologies. He is a Microsoft certified trainer. You can grow professionally by adding the latest technology skills with Microsoft various certifications. You can enroll for any of this training program with us where you will be experiencing live interactive sessions with best industry MCTs. Trust us and we will deliver the best. Now upcoming session in Global Azure 2022. We have two more sessions for today. Titles and timings are mentioned on the screen. If you want to attend any of this session, I will be dropping attendee link for you in chat box. Then we have special offer for you all. We are providing Microsoft certification training on discounted rate. For all the advanced courses at just rupees 22,500 plus GST, which includes hands on lab, free exam voucher, free MOCs, assessment and practice test and will get to get to be trained by our best MCTs. For inquiry, you can drop us mail. I will be sharing our official email ID in our chat box. Next slide. Do follow us on our social media platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter to get updated related to webinars and workshop we do. Links will be shared in the chat box. Now I would like to hand over the mic to Chandrasekhar sir, so you can go ahead with the session. Thank you. Thanks to all. Uh, thanks Chaitali. Uh, thanks Rupesh. And as Chaitali already told you about this session, it will be on a lake house uh, architecture and what exactly it is, why it is, and its implementation in the form of the Delta Lake. So that also we will try to understand and we will uh, try to implement one data pipeline by using uh, Delta Lake. I'm sharing my screen now. <clears throat> so this is the agenda for today. And we will try to cover as much as we can. So one thing uh, everybody uh, will agree with that it's a era where lots of data is getting generated not only through the business activities but also through the social activities. And all the enterprises are trying to use this uh, data generated through social activities even in their business to know you know customer sentiments and accordingly um, you know to automate uh, decision making or to make uh, uh, the decision making process accurate in their business. So many business houses 
have tried uh, started using this uh, data uh, in order to make uh, their business decisions more accurate. So user data is getting generated as of now in this world today. Data is getting generated through and, and you know this is analytics, uh, analytics era where uh, this analytics is not only being used for uh, business activities, even in our day to day activities also. Uh, we are using analytics, so starting from Google Maps and traffic management, uh, basket analysis, everywhere we are somewhere, uh, some, uh, so somehow uh, realizing that analytics is becoming uh, part of a part and par parcel of our life. In uh, logistic management also, it is being used. We are uh, so using and we are getting habitual to use Facebook, WhatsApp and Twitter. Uh, for uh, increasing our social contacts and somewhere every data, every piece of the data that is getting generated out of this uh, uh, social interaction, OK, uh, is important uh, for uh, business community to know uh, customer sentiments. With this big data, there are uh, five V's what we uh, keep talking all the time. First of all, it is a volume huge data is getting generated and now it is posing the uh, you know big uh, problems in front of industry that industry is now needing huge storages to hold his data these storages must be with very high read and write speed that with the speed of data is getting generated it must be captured and uh, preserved so volume of the data is something very important here okay and a new uh, storage uh, devices need storage services are coming up capable of meeting the volume requirement as of today. So in uh, AWS, there are uh, services in Azure also. There are services like Azure Data Lake stores. Earlier data was in the form of the facts and figures only, but now you know a data type is varying. Images are there, audios are there, videos are there. So data formats are also new and new data formats are getting evolved. So CSV format, JSON format, Parkway format, Avro format, lots of different formats are, uh, are also uh, there to represent the data. Every format has its importance and in a specific scenario, that format only uh, fits better compared to all other formats. That's why data variety, different data formats, that's also are coming up uh, new and new one. Uh, velocity of the data, data is coming. Uh, so we are arriving, we are receiving the data with a very high velocity. So maybe data is coming from clicks in the website, maybe coming from logs of the server, maybe coming from IoT devices, maybe coming from lots of transactions, the business transactions, those are happening. But data velocity is also very high and we have to have you know storages capable of uh, uh, capable of recording and capturing the data with the velocity we are receiving the data veracity of the data now whenever we are receiving the data uh, you know all the time it may not be with a high quality there may be because of some noises and distortions in the uh, devices which are capturing the data from the uh, environment and whenever we, uh, the data is being uh, received at the compute, you know, because of some distortions or for one or another reason, you know, the data quality may be uh, deteriorated. So veracity of the data talks about, you know, identifying uh, which part of the uh, data has been distorted and then fixing those problems and increasing the quality of the data. It is a bit obvious that, you know, before we use any kind of data in our uh, analytics or processing, the data must be very good qualified with very, very, very high quality also. In which scenario, because here we are receiving lots of data. Since 40 years, many enterprises are collecting the data without knowing which data will be uh, used for what in the future. So they have accumulated lots of data and now there comes a value of the data in which scenario 
which data to use. So with a high volume of the data, identifying the value of the data also becomes a kind of a challenge. And you know, these five weeds as on today in the big data uh, uh, scenario are very important. And uh, uh, every kind of we has its own set of challenges and a whole industry is trying to uh, evolve new frameworks, new storages, which are capable of meeting all these challenges. As far as analytics is concerned, analytics is not a, uh, 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 we don't have a single system you know, to address all the uh, analytics related problems. There are many challenges as on today in the industry. So here I'm listing the challenges and Definitely, uh, the whole world is uh, trying to evolve uh, a new system which is addressing all these challenges, which is providing solutions to all these problems. So there are different data sources. Data can be ingested from storages, databases, different and different applications, different and different IoT devices, social media, big data, mobile, and many, many data sources are existing as on today compared to uh, earlier days where, you know, uh, we did have you know, very few uh, kind of storage devices or storage arrangements. There are different storages as on today, different clouds have different storage services. Technologies have introduced a different solution for a different scenarios like there are RDBMS storages, there are no SQL storages, there are you know, uh, object storages and block storages, different and different types of storages are also there. These storages are representing data in different and different formats also. So I have row, ORC, Parkway, uh, JSON, CSV, different formats also. Schema changes. Now when data moves from one uh, system to another system, you know, uh, uh, schema uh, may be changed. The cross system data formats may have different schemas with the different views and different indices also. There are noises in the data, discrepancies and duplicates in the data. You know, all these are the challenges, all these are the problems and every problem is posing a kind of a uh, grave challenge uh, in front of industry. There are legacy systems. Today's systems are complex as they are mix of legacy, hybrid, heterogeneous, all these are the you know, system uh, specific challenges today uh, in this world. So there are old systems which we want to use uh, as on today. We want to club those old systems with the new systems. We may want to uh, migrate some of the old systems into new systems or some of the systems as they are. You know, we may want to uh, use and uh, club them with the new systems. So legacy systems are also there, organizational challenges also there. So looking at all the challenges, we are trying to find out some comprehensive and a single solution, okay? So that the solution should be simple. If there are multiple uh, uh, solutions, okay, then all those solutions, working with all those solutions really become uh, complex also. System to store variety and large volume of data. Now, what we are expecting out of the new system? The system should be capable of, you know, uh, deal with a variety and large volume of data, ingest and process the data very quickly. A SAP, okay, very quickly. So even if, you know, latency is in the milliseconds and a second, that is well and good. That is what our uh, today's systems are expecting. Low cost storages, reports, the system should be capable of preparing uh, different kinds of reports, visuals. Now, handy devices are again, again a new challenge. That system should be able to present these reports and visuals even on uh, mobile devices. System should be fault tolerant, automatic, self check, disaster safe, available and high available, optimized, efficient, internationalized compliant compliant uh, compliant to regional and uh, regional and local uh, sorry uh, local norms 
system should be fully secured. Okay, system should be offering turnkey distribution in the sense that these reports and uh, uh, these visuals, you know, should be made available to the end user without, uh, sorry, with minimal latency. That is also we are expecting out of this uh, systems and there comes evolution of this data platform. So earlier it was a data warehouse, then data lake got introduced and then now it is the era of data lake house. So the point to be noted here is that in data warehouse, it was mostly RDBMS system capable of representing only facts uh, and values. Data lake added to the facts and values represent different ways of representation of the data. So now in data lake, we can uh, represent the data in terms of uh, you know, different data formats, in terms of audios and videos also. And then they introduced data lake, which is capable of dealing with facts and figures, a variable arrangement, data representation in variety of the data formats, and it is offering a complete end-to-end -end ecosystem to deal with batch analytics and stream analytics both. So batch analytics and stream analytics in the same system within the same project, having two different uh, data pipelines, batch pipeline as well as the stream pipeline, integrating and interacting with each other, both these things are possible in data lake house. So let us see how this evolution uh, did happen. So initially that it was a data warehouse. It was a, uh, say, uh, based on RDBMS and card rules. It was a queryable arrangement, which was uh, you know not only holding your data, but whenever you want a piece of the data from huge reservoir, it was able to present that piece of the data to you quickly. So through the SQL, we were able to do complex business processes. It did have you know, phenomenal business intelligence also, phenomenal data management also. Just to cite you example of SQL uh, uh, databases, Oracle databases, having you know ms sql studio and oracle uh, uh, databases also did have you know i sql like arrangements but despite of for a very long period industry did uh, use you know data warehouse for their all business activities for recording and capturing every business activity and you know uh, uh, for getting the precise and aggregated data to make their business decisions. But soon whole industry realized that data warehouse is now falling a short of industry demands and industry needs and expectations. Lack of working with the different data formats. As you know, data warehouse was supposed to use and work with only uh, figurative data. It represents uh, data in the proprietary format. OK, that was again one more issue that the data being represented by one database could not be accessed uh, by another database. OK, usually provides only SQL interface, so it was SQL interface only to access the data. Lack of support of advanced analytics, not all the data warehouses were well equipped with all the analytical tools, creating surrounding ecosystem uh, around it was also you know, time consuming and difficult. But the major lacuna specifically within the features of data warehouse was it was able to represent a data in a specific format only. And it was not able to represent data in variety of the formats. That was a major you know, weakness of this uh, data warehouse. And when whole industry started realizing that they wanted to represent the data in different and different formats, then whole industry started looking for some different alternatives. And another alternative was introduced in the form of the data lake. 
So data lake basically is a humongous reservoir of the data where you know data can be kept in whatever the format you want. So support the different data formats can integrate with supporting. You know, data lake doesn't have its own compute. Data warehouse did have its own compute, but data lake has to be well equipped with a separate compute to perform heavy duty processing of the data. So can integrate with supporting compute platforms for big data and advanced analytics. Just to cite an example of this is data lake. Uh, data lake store and data lake service. These are two different uh, uh, kind of services on Azure. So data lake store is a humongous storage and data lake uh, uh, service basically can ingest the data from the data lake store uh, for due processing of it. Can integrate with the BI tools also and uh, 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 data lake service or data lake compute, you know, uh, can uh, transform the data in the presentable way. OK, and uh, can be presented on different and different BI tools. Except the storage does not have other services, so other services are to be uh, are uh, to be a part of the ecosystem. Poor support for data management because we haven't seen a kind of uh, you know management studio like OK uh, to manage all the activities on the data lake. Yes, there were some management studios, but they were not as extensive in offering the services as management studio of SQL Server. Difficult to work qualitatively with the complex data. All these were, you know, weaknesses over the time whole industry started realizing. Hard to append the data. Difficult to make fine grained changes to the data because data is always written in the blocks of the record, blocks uh, of the data. And whenever you want to read one small part of the data, you will have to read a whole block. That too sequential and whenever you want to do uh, uh, small changes to it, you have to write all the blocks sequentially there. Mixing streaming and batch operations lead to inconsistency. So there were two separate lines to be handled, OK, like batch operations and batch data pipeline and stream data pipeline to be handled separately. It is because whenever we are trying to uh, have the system with both these pipelines working together, then designing such a system was really difficult. And that's why Lambda uh, like architectures were difficult to implement because you know uh, preventing the data from the inconsistency was really difficult there. So there were serious uh, you know weaknesses of this architecture. Uh, so over the time, then lake house architect architecture got introduced, and this lake house architecture, you know, uh, offers you all the win-win scenarios and situations in the sense that, you know, it picks up the best of the data warehouses and the best of the uh, data lake also, and all the best are combined together and have made have been made so effective. Uh, uh, so effective system that most of the problems which uh, you know till to the industry was uh, looking the solution for now they have arrived to the solution so combines the best part of data warehouse and data lake phenomenal data management and business intelligence so can be uh, clubbed to visualization uh, uh, arrangements like power bi Data engineers to build pipeline of data munging, data transformation, data processing for downstream applications to use. Data scientists at the same time can you know work with artificial intelligence, ML, uh, machine learning part of the analytics. So integration with other external systems let the process the data be consumed elsewhere. So here we are not only talking about you know having a uh, system which represents the different data formats, having the system which can do processing very fast. Here we are also looking for integrating this system with other systems to let other systems uh, consume processed data quickly, or let our system 
lake house system to consume the data coming from other systems to support a variety of the data formats okay need a unified system to support all these features under one roof and that is what lake house has promoted so here you can see its architecture okay structured data semi structured data and unstructured data can be ingested into uh, this lake house okay we can curate the data here we can apply different and different data engineering uh, processes over their data science processes over there and finally we can make that data available to consume uh, at the different variety of the aids <clears throat> so with this system we also are expecting batch and stream processing can be easily combined together batch and stream processing can be easily combined together and otherwise what industry was expecting uh, experiencing that whenever these two processes are combined together data becomes inconsistent okay but now here they have found a solution and here inconsistent data can be prevented inconsistency with the data can be prevented even if batch uh, pipeline and stream pipeline uh, stream pipeline are working uh, with each other cohesively so that is one more and ultimate benefit of the lake house architecture and it is give, giving a great solution to a very serious problem uh, of combining batch data pipeline and stream data pipeline okay by prevent uh, in the way preventing the data just a minute in the way preventing the data from becoming inconsistent so data lake house is now let us understand what are all features available with a data lake house you will see long list of the features open data management architecture that unifies best part of data warehousing and uh, best part of data lake there we can do advanced analytics also so it is a huge storage reservoir it is flexible cost efficient scalable highly scalable okay and uh, it allows me data management also and it also allows acid transactions now acid transactions are available in database why they have been provided here uh, with a lake house so I all am um, um, so twice or thrice. I am making the point that combining the batch processing pipeline and stream processing pipeline, and whenever we are trying to combine them, their implementation becomes difficult to prevent the data from becoming inconsistent. The solution on that is acid transaction. So acid transactions haven't been introduced here uh, to make it. Uh, uh, to make it a tool to deal with a OLTP workload. No. Acid transactions are introduced here not to deal with a OLTP workload. For dealing with a OLTP workload, database is already there. But acid transactions have been introduced there to prevent data to become inconsistent, to always keep data in the consistent form, specifically when batch processing and stream processing pipelines are working cohesively together so that is the reason why they enter acid transactions enable business intelligence machine learning on all types of data prominent features so it is its architecture is very simple two tier architecture what it has okay so just two tiers only and that's why latency is very low because there are no multiple tiers through which all the processes go and thereby uh, delay uh, the uh, outcome. That is not the case here. Uh, architecture is very simple. Internally, they are using high performance SQL uh, engine. They are using in memory processing you know, to create the results very quickly. So they may be caching the data to RAM and SSD, so 
this lakehouse specifically is intended to extensively use RAM and SSD and to uh, create responses very fast. Use of open data formats, so they are internally using Parkway format to make it easy for a data scientist and machine learning engineers to assess the data because here we have seen Parkway for, for, for many tools, many prominent tools, you know, uh, can work with the Parkway format. Support of well-known and widely used libraries like uh, Pandas, Spark, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Okay, support of audit history and time in uh, tribal also. Schema enforcement. We have seen U turn specifically in this area that our relational database management system, which was aligned with the, the quad, quad uh, uh, rules, you know, it was uh, designed with a schema enforcement. So, schema at read and write also. So, schema at the write was ensuring that valid uh, data only to enter into the system. And schema on the read, that is essential uh, uh, to, uh, um, uh, 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 to work SQL over there, to make to work SQL over there. Then we saw in no SQL databases, it was schema on read, read only. And there was no schema on write. But now whole world again has realized the significance and importance of schema on write. And that's why in Lake House, they are suggesting schema enforcement. So only valid data, only data that is aligning with the schema to enter into the system. Internally, versions of the tables, data validation, that all are uh, the caretaken by schema enforcement. This IO streaming happens so fast in uh, Lake House. And why it happens so fast in Lake House? Because internally, it cache data into RAM and SSD. So it happens so fast uh, with the Lake House that now we can see uh, no role for Apache Kafka uh, in this overall IO stream processing. So directly, a data can uh, insert into the system and reach to the processing engine. Lakehouse architecture. So here you will see these are different uh, data sources. So there are data sources which may be, uh, you know, creating a bulk data or preserving bulk data. There are sources which are creating a stream of the data. Ingestion layer, structured data, unstructured, semi-structured uh, data. So both these types of data can enter the system, structured data and unstructured and structured, semi-structured data can enter into the system and uh, uh, say storage layer, catalog layer and processing layer. Okay, these three layers are actually uh, forming uh, lake house architecture. In order to preserve structured data, there will be data, data warehouse, in order to uh, preserve unstructured and semi-structured data, there can be a data lake. And, uh, you know, metadata of all both these storages are separately managed, separately preserved uh, under the title catalog. So shared catalog basically is a data catalog for data, data going into data warehouse as well as data going into data lake. Data going into data warehouse is with the facts and figures. Data going into data lake, maybe a kind of structured or semi-structured or unstructured. And for both types of data, the metadata is maintained under the head catalog. Then different processings can be done. So it can be big data processing. It can be near real-time processing. It can be ETL also. So different processings can be done on that data and the processed data can be you know uh, ingest uh, uh, can be submitted to uh, machine learning engines business intelligence or for interactive query so this processing layer catalog layer and storage layer and ingestion layer these layers are forming uh, lake house architecture <coughs>
फॉर लेक हाउस डेल्टा लेक फ्रेमवर्क हैज बीन ऑफर्ड बाय डेटा ब्रिक्स सॉरी डेटा ब्रिक्स हैज ऑफर्ड ने इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ डेल्टा लेक बट अदरवाइज डेटा लेक इज ओपन सोर्स प्रोजेक्ट दैट अलाउज बिल्डिंग लेक हाउस आर्किटेक्चर ऑन द टॉप ऑफ नाउ दिस लेक हाउस आर्किटेक्चर दे हैव टू दे वांटेड टू मेक इट जेनेरिक एंड नॉट स्पेसिफिक टू स्पेसिफिक प्लेटफॉर्म so they wanted to make it generic and they have made it generic in such a way that you know this lake house architecture can work on data lakes offered by different uh, clouds and technologies so hadoop offers sdfs aws offers s3 uh, azure offers edls google offers gcs okay so this lake house can go with its variety of the storages lake house can use variety of the compute engines so for processing it may use the spark flink presto db or trino and can you know get the data processed from different engines when we talk about spark and flink then you know developer community can do a development by using their respective uh, language skills so uh developers from java background can do development in java on python on scala on sql and variety of other languages so because of it what's happening is developer community with what you have the baggage they come you know they can do development so looking at it it seems like you know uh, uh, lake house will be able to do a good collaboration with different storages good collaboration with a variety of the computes for different and different uh, sorry uh, for the developers coming from different and different backgrounds at the heart of the delta lake what is the building block of the system at the heart of the delta lake data is represented as a table which supports acid properties which supports constraint joins and quickly can you know uh, give responses to complex queries so delta lake has something called as a table structure which forms a complete building block for delta lake pipeline they can accommodate stream data on the fly operations on them may also change the result with a fresh data pumped in so these tables are capable of accommodating live data coming from streams and whenever you are running the query the result of the query will keep changing with more and more data arrived and uh, arrived into the tables the results of the query will keep changing so these are dynamic tables that is the point to be noted delta lake architecture streaming data and batch data both data can be ingested into delta lake now in order to ingest the data from them delta lake does have you know uh, arrangements to connect to variety of the data sources so can ingest the data from cloud different types of clouds Uh, uh even from uh, hadoop ldfs also and can ingest data from uh, you know uh, data sources which are creating the data dynamically after due processing or in order to do a processing of the data as i already told you that delta lake can interact with a variety of the engines so there may be spark trino presto flink hive kafka different types of engines and after due processing of the data that data becomes a queryable that data can be consumed in machine for creating machine learning models for creating advanced analytics and that data can be queried to create different reports and dashboards delta lake features for lake house So very interesting features are there. <clears throat> As we already have seen, 
Delta Lake is expected to connect to variety of the data sources, variety of the data sinks, and variety of the computes. For this purpose, in order to connect to these uh, different tools, there is something which has been introduced here that is called as a delta sharing. The delta sharing is an open protocol for securely sharing the live data across organizations irrespective of the uh, for variety of the compute pl platforms for variety of the tools, appliances, appliances, applications and storage. So delta sharing is an open protocol which has been introduced okay, to connect to variety of computes, variety of storages, variety of tools, applications, and most important is appliances also. In order to manage the data in the form of the delta table, which I just uh, introduced to you, delta table. On this delta table, you know, a dynamic data comes in and gets appended to that table. And when and when you query that table every time, you know, you may be getting the different responses because newer and new, newer data just get appended to these tables. There, in order to manage the, the batch uh, processing pipeline and stream processing pipeline, we have to have something called as ACID transaction. So provide serializability with the strongest level of isolation. Makes easy to manage multiple data pipelines concurrently by ensuring data integrity. So ACID transactions have not been introduced there to deal with OLTP workload, but have been introduced there to keep your data integrity intact, specifically when multiple data pipelines are concurrently running. OK, in the earlier diagram, I also brought to your notice about uh, catalog management. Now here, you know, this catalog is being maintained for uh, um, structured data, maybe structured data as well as unstructured data. Data that is being maintained in the data warehouse and data that is being maintained in data lake store. OK, it's a metadata is maintained in this catalog. Size of the catalog really becomes large. So that is the metadata handling for big data. Even metadata also can be big. Delta Lake can handle petabyte scale tables of metadata with billions of partitions and files at ease, considering it to be big data, thus processing it in the distributed fashion. So catalog processing also happens in the distributed fashion uh, in Delta Lake. So handling data in distributed fashion happens in Hadoop, happens in Spark, happens in Flink. But handling metadata in distributed fashion, that also have been made possible here, so that metadata processing also uh, happens very quickly. <coughs> Open formats. Apache Parkway format leverages native and efficient encoding and compression schemes. It is a natural way of data lake to store data. No, Apache Parkway. Apache Parkway format you normally have seen uh, specifically in analytics processing. The reason using Apache Parkway format are multiple. One prominent reason is it uh, store the data in columnar format and this columnar format definitely, you know, uh, gives you uh, good performance for analytical processing. That is one reason. Another reason is encryption of the data is more effective in part three. Because whenever your data is being stored in columnar format, so integer column data gets stored together. So applying encryption on integer becomes more effective there uh, as you are applying it in one go for whole column. <clears throat> so there are a couple of uh, reasons why Parkway format is suitable for analytics processing. OK, and this is open format also. OK, and that is what Delta Lake is extensively using. Uh, 
uh, for representing uh, uh, its uh, delta data. Schema enforcement on this also I already have told you it safeguard the data quality by rejecting the rights of corrupt disoriented data by ensuring schema on read and write. It means whenever data has to enter into the system, that data must abide by schema. So schema, schema constraints, schema validations, it must be abiding to all that. OK, so only valid data enters into the system. Delta Lake allows easily declaring schema and con constraints on tables. So again, we are going back to uh, the era where transaction management or acid properties were uh, bundled into the product and schema enforcement was also bundled into the product. So we are going back to that era. Unified batch and stream processing. So this uh, uh, acid properties are making uh, possible to uh, work multiple data pipelines, maybe batch processing or stream processing, multiple data pipelines cohesively working with each other. The table in Delta Lake works as a building block for batch and stream processing in different or same data pipeline. In different or same data pipeline, same data pipeline is very important. So whenever you get the data into Delta Lake table, you can apply batch processing work over there or you can apply even stream processing work over. That is something interesting. For static and real time dynamic data support, the table structure also constraints joins to interact using SQL with a complex queries. These table structures can be joined together. OK, and thereby, you know, complex queries also can work on these tables. In order to perform quickly, these tables are maintained in memory. And whenever they are maintained in memory, you know, your system don't have to go to hard disk to access them. And that's why, you know, query processing over these tables are extremely fast. Very fast. Delta everywhere. So reach in support for connectors and plugins to connect to variety of the tools, applications, appliances and platforms through data share protocol. So there is a data share protocol which is generalized and uh, open source protocol. OK, that protocol has been evolved here and that is being used to provide connectivity to variety of the storage devices, variety of the compute devices, variety of the tools and appliances. Absurd and delete are also possible. Audit history and time travel is also possible. And somewhere it is compatible with Apache Spark API in the sense that. The table created here, you know, can be very easily converted to global and local tables of Apache Spark. Very easily converted into, very quickly converted into global and local tables of Apache Spark. And then Apache Spark API can be applied on this table. OK, so that is also possible. Now let us have closer look to Delta Lake architecture. So here you will see data quality levels. Here you will see data quality levels. So data quality levels means there is a bronze level uh, layer or there is a bronze level which holds raw data ingested from variety of the data sources. So when Data is ingested from any data source. It first of all goes into bronze layer uh, level or bronze bronze layer. Bronze layer is represented in, in terms of bronze tables. So these are delta tables what we are calling. OK, so these bronze tables are populated with a raw data. And when you apply some operations of transformation or sorry of not of transfer data cleaning and transformation operations, so you enrich your data and you get filtered and cleaned augment, uh, augmented data here. And now we populate that data into something called as the silver delta tables. Silver delta tables. And from silver delta tables, whenever you apply different aggregations, 
and create a new set of table which is holding aggregated data that is called as a gold data table. So gold data table has business ready data to generate a reports or to query it. Table can be Hello, since how long I have got disconnected? Hello, yes, sir. You got disconnected for I guess two minutes or something. Your screen is not visible. I'm sharing the screen. So. Uh, no. Uh, do you want me to repeat this architecture or whether uh, when I explain this architecture, I was live there? Hello, somebody please. 
OK. OK, so let me quickly explain about these uh, three layers. So bronze layer contains a raw data. Silver layer contains you know, uh, 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 raw data cleaned and transformed. OK, so well transformed and enriched data goes into the silver table. It is with more refined views. OK, gold table provides a business level aggregation. So aggregation, whenever you apply aggregation on the data, OK, you get uh, data ready to query, data ready to consume elsewhere. So that data, which is you know, completely processed now and have been made, have been made ready for querying and have been made uh, ready for further consumption, that data goes into the gold table. So after explaining this, there then I explained to you about you know, they have uh, in the inside uh, in the data bricks. OK, they have offered you Delta Lake API. For the same purpose. Delta Lake API, which is an implementation of Lake House. It is an implementation of Lake House. So now we will go to the data bricks and we will try to uh, implement Delta Lake. So it is just a way uh, to give you a glimpse of how it works. So here I am creating a data bricks. OK, so I am at the home screen and here on clicking on create a resource, I can search for data bricks here. And when I click here, you know, it does ask me some configuration for provisioning. And after I give uh, that configuration, like which resource group I want this service be created. What is the name of the data bricks workspace? Which region it to be created? And what is the pricing tier? OK, so we have to go with a premium pricing tier or you also can go with a trial pricing tier. OK, so any one pricing tier you can choose from here and then you can click on review plus create and after a couple of minutes you will see that Databricks service has been created. I already have created that service, so here it is. I already have created that service. OK, and after provisioning when your portal takes you to uh, overview page, OK, that overview page looks something like this and when you click here on launch workspace, OK, a new portal is launched, which is of the Databricks, and that portal looks something like this. Okay, that portal looks something like this. Before I move ahead, I do one thing quickly. OK, I start the compute because somehow, you know, it takes a, a longer time to create the compute. So I have one compute already configured. Now what exactly com compute is? The compute is a cluster where my processing will be done. So I already have declared one compute here. This is all purpose cluster. What I already have uh, created here. OK, so cluster mode. There are three cluster modes available. One is uh, high concurrency, second is standard and third is single mode. I am doing a development. That's why I prefer going with a single node because you know, it incurs very less cost for me. OK, Databricks runtime version I have selected from here. From here I have selected one machine. So I'm going with one uh, machine which uh, has 14 GB of RAM, but four cores of uh, compute. So that machine I have selected and I want to start this cluster. So I'm clicking on start and it will take next, you know, 10 minutes to make this cluster ready. In the meantime, let me explain you. The rest of the things. So I believe some of you already have worked on the uh, Databricks, but many of you perhaps are new to Databricks. That's why I'm taking opportunity to introduce to you the Databricks. From here, we can uh, select the profile. If you are a data, if you want to do data engineering and data science work, here you can select the profile. This profile I already have selected, and that's why there I, I have got compute or source. Machine learning 
operations if you want to do, you can do them from here. SQL operations if you want to do that, you can do from here. First of all, I would like to go with a data science and engineering profile. And now in this profile, I want to open a notebook. I already have created one notebook here. OK, so I just do double click. And here is a notebook. The editor for creating this notebook, you might have worked with a Jupyter notebook. Or uh, uh, this is called as a Monaco notebook. OK, in this notebook, I have already written some commands to uh, save my time in typing. OK, so I will go with the set of commands which already have uh, which already I have written. <coughs> OK, so in the same notebook, whatever be the PySpark code that I'm going to write. I will create two types of uh, data pipelines here. <coughs> the stream data pipeline and uh, batch data pipeline. OK, so now let us come to these steps uh, one by one. OK, here I can see the status of the cluster. And it is showing me that it is still getting provision. OK, so you just observe left top corner of this notebook where you know you will see that cluster is getting provision. OK. So let me increase the size. I am user CVDS 2013, so I am declaring username here and I am declaring user home path. I want it to create one directory structure and inside that directory, whatever be the intermediate data, whatever be the staging data that it should preserve. So I am just making an arrangement for it to create one staging space where it will have to preserve some staging data. I already have told you that delta lake tables are managed and maintained in the memory. OK, but sometimes it needs a kind of a staging. So that's why I am getting giving it a space for the staging purpose. Here for different layers. For staging in different layers, I will have to create a different checkpoint paths. So what is this staging that also I will explain to you. OK, basically this staging is meant for checkpoints. So here I am declaring a folder structure for bronze table and bronze checkpoint. Silver table and silver checkpoint, gold table, and here is a gold chip. So for three different layers and three different levels, here we are creating three different checkpoints. How the checkpoints will be used? That we will see soon. Okay. I am removing all the contents in case if there are going to those folder structures. OK, so I'm emptying all those folder structures which we just have declared uh, in the earlier cell. This is called as a cell. This is a command within the cell and this whole rectangle is called as a cell. OK, so here also you will see these commands, multiple commands I have written in one cell. So I can write a cell within, sorry, I can write single command in a cell or I can write multiple commands within the cell. <clears throat> OK. I have one storage account already created, so let me take you to that storage account because you know from that storage account, I want to pull the data into this data bricks. So for that purpose, you know, here I have created one storage account and let me show you the data there. Data is a container. Data is a container and inside the container, immediately inside the container, I'm keeping one file geolookup.parkway. This file is actually 
uh, holding a lookup data. It is holding a lookup data. OK, and then I have a streaming data coming from this folder. So there are uh, four JSON files here holding uh, JSON objects and those JSON objects are that data will be considered to be streaming uh, data. So files inside delta data dot JSON and its geo lookup files. These two types of files we will be using for creating these different pipelines. Here I am configuring a storage account. So this is container name. This is container name. This is storage account name and this is access key for the storage. Here is the access key for the storage. So hereby I am configuring uh, the access, uh, so access to the storage. The file that we are uh, trying to read from there. They are schema list files. No, it's a JSON data. Still I am declaring a schema again. So here is a schema I am declaring. This schema is aligned with the schema declared within the JSON data. OK, so structured field, structure type, long type, string type. All these are the uh, you know imports from PySpark. All these are the imports from PySpark. PySpark is a library of API for uh, Spark. So there is a library of API for Java, for Spark, for Scala, for R language, but the library of the Python is called as the PySpark. So that library uh, classes I am using and I'm creating a schema here. Here is a command. Here is a command uh, to read the data from the delta data dot JSON. Impose a schema over there. And can treat it as the streaming data and create dynamic data frame. So here we are creating a dynamic data frame. It is not a static data frame. It is a dynamic data frame in the sense that. Whenever that data it will not bring whole data in one go. It will simulate a streaming environment and will bring batches, micro batches of that data. So it will bring micro batches of that data and those micro batches will be appended into this dynamic data. And it will. Keep. Hello, am I audible there? Chetali.
Hello, yeah. yes, sir. You are audible. Yeah, yeah. I'm sharing my screen again. I want to make that workspace empty. OK, so here I am executing iterative remove command. To run every uh, to remove everything iteratively from the path. Then I am declaring here so that command also I have to, to run. Oh, sorry, I forgot to execute this command first. Oh. Yes. Let me put all these commands to run. Then the second one. Then the third one. And then we will declare uh, necessary information to connect to the storage. So true means it found something which it can remove, and that's why it is it has removed it, and that's why it is returning it. OK, so here I am uh, declaring a path uh, um, to the storage, URL to the storage, and this is one configuration along with the account key. This is account key. So that also I'm declaring. I'm putting it to run. It also got executed. Then here I declare a schema. I'm running this comma to create a schema. And then here I execute this command. OK, so let us have a look at this command again. So here I am asking it to go to this folder. OK, and to start loading the files. Uh, macro batch wise. OK, apply the schema on every macro batch. The data what it has brought into that macro batch. OK, uh, format is JSON and create a stream. OK, uh, so here it will create a streaming data frame. OK, so this is non static streaming data frame. So I'm putting this command to run. And yes, it has started this command. <coughs> here is a schema. Arriving time, creation time, device, index. Yes, model user geolocation. For geolocation, there are two sub objects, city and country. <coughs> And other uh, fields there. <coughs> we already have understood this Delta Lake architecture, so I am moving ahead. Now, here you observe this command. I created. <coughs> <coughs> I created a dynamic data frame. Now from that dynamic data frame, I write the raw data. That dynamic data frame is having raw data because the dynamic data frame is getting populated directly from the files. So it is having raw data and that raw data I want to write in the data format. OK, in which checkpoint location it is bronze check. And what will be the output mode? That when it receives the first macro batch, in case in that in that batch it is receiving 50 records, it will put those 50 records into this delta table, and the next 50 records which are coming in next batch, that those will be appended into this delta table. So it will keep appending of new incoming data into that delta table. Let us quickly go through a couple of points here. Append adds only new records to output sync. Output sync here is a delta table. If it is complete, now here we will not do complete. Let us understand the meaning of the complete. We will do complete little later. So complete means what? It doesn't do appending. It rewrite whole thing. 
it overwrite whole thing. Rewrite whole thing that is called as a complete. So we will use a complete little later. At present, update mode is not supported. Only two append and complete modes are being supported. These uh, modes basically are, you know, for uh, streaming data. Okay, for data append and complete, these two modes are being supported as of now. Uh, update mode will be supported sooner or later. Okay, so hereby, you know, uh, bronze layer data is being pushed to bronze layer. This whole data is raw and that's why it is going into bronze layer. <clears throat> so I'm putting this code to run now and then it will create a data table of bronze type. OK, and here. It will create a data table of bronze type. So just observe how it brings the data. Uh, batch by batch. Yes. So yes, it is batch duration. It is it, it it will keep bringing the data. Okay, and there you will see the size of this data frame will keep changing also. It will keep bringing the data. Fine. Let me collapse this and let it let us go to the next step now. So I am getting data accumulated into uh bronze table now i want to process that data and for doing the processing i want to get a lookup data so here now i am trying to get the lookup data from geolookup.park i did show you this file here geolookup.park <coughs> So spark dot read. It is not read stream. It is read. Format parkway. Load. So whenever it is not read stream, it means the data frame that is getting created here is a static data frame. In Spark, there are two types of data frames: dynamic and static. The static data frame is created with a read method, and the dynamic data frame is created with a read stream method. So here we are creating a dynamic data frame because we are using read stream. Dynamic data frame gets appended with the newer and newer data, and that's why state of dynamic data frame keep changing with the receipt of the newer and newer data. On the other hand, static data frame is created in one go, and there then you cannot append anything to it. So here we are creating a static data frame with a um, we are reading parkway file from this path. OK, and here we are getting a data frame created. OK, for these many columns only. So here is the one column English short name. There is a, another column alpha three code. I am creating alias for these columns. So for English short name, it's alias country and for alpha three code, it's alias country code three. So hereby I will get a lookup data frame. So we are getting a lookup data frame. Now here we want to apply some cleansing activities. Those we can apply. Huh? So those we can apply here uh, on this data frame. OK, we can read the data from Delta and we can create a new de data frame. Um, uh, we can read the data from bronze Delta. And we can apply different cleaning activities over here. We can apply different transformation activities over here. I just want to show you one transformation. And that transformation is I am reading the data from the bronze table. On that data, I am applying some operations of selecting few of the columns giving some alias to the column names and joining that table with a geo for lookup df. Geo for lookup df is a data frame we just have created. So here we have created 
geo for lookup. So I am doing a lookup uh, on that table and bringing some data from there also. Here I am trying to do left join. So we are left joining uh, this bronze delta table to uh, geo uh, lookup table and thereby through that joining, I am getting a kind of a joint transformation and I am getting a new data frame with a transformed uh, data. This single step is <coughs> representing multiple steps of data cleaning, data transformation, data munging, data wrangling, whatever you want to do, all those things you can do here. But when you get the final data frame, okay, which is representing all clean, all transformed data, such a data frame, then you will persist to the silver layer. Such a data frame you will persist to the silver layer. Okay, here you observe on that data frame, write string, format delta. Whenever you want to write the data to the delta layer, the format must always be delta and it will not be parquet. But take my word that even if it is delta, when the data actually goes on to the storage, it goes in parquet. But while men mentioning it, you will have to mention format as delta. And to which checkpoint location we are <coughs> moving the data? Silver checkpoint. Location. Now, whether whole data goes into silver checkpoint only? No. Whenever you are moving data to silver checkpoint, uh, sorry, no, silver uh, uh, delta layer, it is maintained in the RAM. The data is actually going into the RAM, but it's a snapshot is going into silver check. So the checkpoints basically are to hold the snapshots only. And actual data remains in the RAM. That is the elegancy of these delta data frames or delta tables. <coughs> Output mode again happened. So whole data will be kept, uh, no, so will be uh, cleaned, transformed, and then will be pushed to the appended to the silver table. <coughs> so delta will go into the silver table. After that, if you want to look at the path of the silver table, that whenever it is storing snapshots of the data there, okay, how does it look like? So that we will see, but before that, I want to run this command. Just a minute, I think I have forgotten running this command also. Okay, I forgot to run this command also. Uh, okay, that command got executed. Now this command let me quickly run. And now it is successfully executed. We have populated data here. This is the data schema. And then we want to persist it. Here we are persisting. <clears throat> and it got executed. If you want to have a look at it, how it is uh, receiving the data, and as time passes, how it will keep receiving the data. <clears throat> okay, as time will pass on, will keep showing me the progress. OK. What is the content of the checkpoint directory where the snapshot of the data is being created? So there you will see this is the checkpoint directory 
and every uh, so data is going there in the form of the parkway. So parkway is the native format for Delta Lake to preserve the data uh, snapshots. How many active streams are uh, streams are working at this point of time? So there should be two active streams working. One active stream is still reading the data from the uh, file and uh, putting it into delta table. OK, another active stream is from the delta table. Sorry, which delta table it is bronze delta table and another active stream is pulling the data from bronze table and putting it into stream tables. So there are two active streams. When I run display command on those the data frames, the display command triggers two more active streams uh, to submit that data to the display command to show and echo on the screen. So thereafter, if I see, now it will keep showing me the data. So two additional streams it has started creating. Uh, yes. OK, so uh, now if I want to see how many active streams are working there, so now I will see there are four active streams working. There are four active streams working. So again, I repeat two active streams. To uh, to move the data into bronze table and silver table and two active streams for this display command. OK, let me cancel this. OK. And now let me see how many active streams are there. So two active streams are there because two streams mean for a display command have been disrupted. Now the next step that we will apply aggregation on the data and we will move aggregate data into uh, the gold table. So this step basically is representing all those aggregation operations. I may be doing one aggregation operations, but otherwise in real life scenarios, you may have a number of aggregation operations to be done uh, on the silver table data. OK, so here we are loading silver table data. We are doing grouping, then we are. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we are creating a hour wise window there. So different operations we are doing and late at last we are writing that stream into a uh, group count checkpoint. Now group count checkpoint if you if I scroll it up and take you to the top group point checkpoint is a uh, group count checkpoint is representing group count path. Group group count checkpoint is representing a uh, checkpoint of gold path. Okay, so so now there we are moving that data to the gold uh, table. So now let me put this command to run. <clears throat> and now here it is creating. A delta table. For gold layer and now it has started creating delta table. So if you want to see what type of uh, snapshots of the data it is. Uh, uh, persisting to the checkpoint, you can see it from here. And there also you will see that it is creating a parkway paths. It is creating parkway paths. <clears throat> so after. You know, data has gone into the gold table. Now I want it. Uh, so it to create a table. OK, by ingesting the data from gold table. By ingesting data from the gold table. So here we are dropping the table if, in case if it is already existing and here we are creating a table. OK, new table with the name group count. So here we are creating a table with the name group count. OK, and see how the syntax we are writing. So using delta. I don't have to mention location because here we are mentioning the count path. So when I put it to run. 
it will create a table with the name group count. OK, and now that table can be queried. So here we are querying that table. <coughs> Select star from group count. Here we are querying the table. Now this table can be queried from variety of the visualization tools also. It can be queried from uh, Databricks SQL. It can be queried from Databricks SQL also. Databricks SQL can be uh, visited from here. So what I do, I just. Uh, I have uh, created Databricks, uh, sorry, SQL profile here in this another tab. So here is the SQL profile. I can choose the profile from here. OK, for our earlier work, we did choose a profile from data science and engineering where we wrote, you know, uh, PySpark code and there we created a table. OK, that table can be accessed from SQL. <clears throat> now in this SQL, you can create SQL endpoints. You can create different queries. You can create dashboards. Lots of things you can create from uh, from here. OK, and you can while creating the dashboard, you can pull the data that has been created here. So this table you can pull and thereby you can create a dashboard. And that dashboard, you know, can be uh, you can provide an access to the different user to refer to that dashboard. So the, the images in that dashboard, the visuals in that dashboard will keep changing dynamically as you know uh, more and <coughs> more data gets appended into this pipeline so more and more data when gets appended into this pipeline you know date uh, the visuals on that dashboard keep changing the discussion on how to create those dashboards on varying the date uh, the table created here is beyond the scope of today's discussion but once you create this table, you know this table. You can query in Power BI. You can query it in uh, Databricks SQL. OK, so. These tables are queryable from outside uh, the Databricks environment. For that purpose, I have to open Databricks in endpoint. OK, and thereby then uh, we can provide access to this table for query. OK, to the outside environment. So again, coming back to uh, this implementation. OK, whatever steps we have uh, executed here, mainly these steps are, uh, you know, uh, pop getting uh, raw data populated. After due population of the raw data, you may be allowing different or applying different data cleansing and data, uh, data transformation techniques here. And after that, your process enriched data data has to go into silver delta layer. OK, and again to repeat here in the silver delta layer, you know it maintains that data into the RAM. So these steps get are executed very fast because by default it is getting data from the RAM only. Your enriched data then you can uh, apply the trans sorry uh, aggregation over there and your aggregated data you can push to the goal table okay how are the uh, syntaxes to uh, work with these different layers are evident from this code so this is the syntax to write the data data to the delta layer here is a syntax to write it to the uh, silver layer i think here we are writing it to silver layer here we are writing it to silver layer and then at last here we have seen how can we write it to. Uh, how can it we write it to gold layer? So here we are reading the data from the silver layer. OK, doing some operations over there and writing the data to the. Uh, gold layer, so here we are working with the different layers. One more point would like to bring to everybody's notice about the checkpoints. The checkpoints are giving us a sense that whether data is going into 
uh, the storage. So it may be needing some time to write the data to the storage and a time to read the data from the storage for the next state. But that is not the case as I already told you this data goes into the checkpoint, but before that it is maintained in the RAM. Now the question is that if data is maintained in the RAM, why then it is stored into the checkpoint? So there you try to understand the resiliency of these data frames, how these data frames can be made resilient. Consider that <coughs> here whenever your data is going into the gold path and for some reason, uh, sorry, gold table and for some reason that gold table uh, has lost its part because one of the node in the cluster has gone down. So gold table, though we call it as a table, okay, it's um, uh, that whole table does not exist within the single node. It is after all the cluster. So part of that table, okay, goes into node one, part goes into node two, part goes into node three, part goes into node four. If I consider there are four nodes. And consider that node 2 uh, encounters some snag and that's why it shuts down. So when it shuts down now, that part is not accessible. So as that part is not accessible, then what it does, it may bring a new node into the cluster and that happens automatically. That happens automatically, that is availability. And where comes the resilience? <coughs> So once it gets a new node, which doesn't have that last part. So it pulls the data from the checkpoint and build that part into the RAM. There is a role of this chip. So it doesn't have to. If that data is already uh, existing into the checkpoint, silver checkpoint, for example, that data pre-processed the data is existing into checkpoint. It will read that part of the data from there, apply all aggregation operations there and build a new delta part of the delta table. It happens automatically. This is called as a resilience. Now this resiliency is quickly uh, completing its work because the snapshot is already existing into silver path. So as it is already existing into silver path, it simply have to read that data from the silver path, apply necessary aggregation steps what uh, you want to and create a new uh, part of the delta, uh, delta table. This happens quickly and why this is happening quickly? Because pre-processed uh, part of the data is already existing in the silver. It is already existing at the checkpoint of the silver. The role of the checkpoint of the silver comes into play at this point of time that when it has to rebuild the delta part of the delta table, which has been lost because one of the nodes uh, developed a snag and has gone down and it has crashed. Otherwise, it doesn't have to use these checkpoints. It doesn't have to use the checkpoints because it is maintaining whole data into RAM only. So that's how you know Delta Lake works. It really works very fast. OK, and here you will realize that. Uh, here you are creating a stream uh, data frame. From the stream data frame here you are creating. Uh, bronze check sorry, bronze table or silver table, whatever it be or gold table. OK. Uh, such tables can be created from uh, a static data frame also. OK, so that also is possible that such a data. So here I am creating a data frame. Here I am creating a data frame from static. This is a static data frame. So here is a static data frame. And here now you will realize that these static data frames I'm joining one uh, sorry, a dynamic data frame. And joining with the static data. 
So that joining also I can do on the data frames. OK, and uh, then uh, the whole data can be pushed into the uh, table. So this is the way we can work with it. <coughs> Delta uh, tables and once you create a global table or local table at last, that becomes queryable from other uh, devices who can connect to uh, SQL endpoints. So from here we can create a SQL endpoint. From here we can create a SQL endpoint. This is a SQL uh, profile. OK, from here we can create SQL endpoints. Let me try creating one SQL endpoints. OK, uh, but uh, this SQL endpoint creation is failing as of now because of some issues at the data center. So I let me try creating it and if it gets created, if by this time the issue has been resolved, say, then I can show you a couple of other things also. OK, but uh, there are some issues with the data uh, sorry, data center because of which it is failing to create this SQL endpoint. But in this SQL endpoint, then we can pull that data and we can create the different visuals here. We can create a dashboard out of those different visuals here. OK, and uh, every change that is happening at the, that Delta table lab uh, uh, at the level of the table, you know, those changes also can be viewed here. The graphs and visuals keep changing that also we can see here. The point is. This is the way you can design. A stream processing pipeline and batch processing pipeline. So here. This particular data frame is representing batch processing pipeline. Now let me show you. This particular data frame is representing static data frame and it can be used to uh, prepare batch processing pipeline and this, this particular data frame is representing stream processing pipeline and both these pipelines can be combined together and we can work uh, design a work around them to make batch and stream processing pipeline to work together. <clears throat> Let me just check whether in the meantime endpoint has been started. No, it is still getting started. In the meantime, let me take you to the slides. As far as this Spark engine is concerned, the Databricks is a end-to-end -end development, enterprise level development framework around the Spark engine that everybody knows. But otherwise on Azure, this Databricks is a first class citizen. So they have introduced the Databricks on Azure in such a way that Databricks on Azure uh, has been aligned with the features of the Azure. And at some fronts, Databricks on Azure offers you more performance because Databricks has been aligned to uh, Azure. Spark Engine is there as a compute engine in other Azure services also. So it is there in HD Insight. So in HD Insight, you know, Spark Engine can be used. But as of now, you know, HD Insight, uh, this uh, Delta Lake is available on this Spark post 3.x version. So this Spark 3.x version is available in HD Insight also. And on HD Insight, if you want to use the Delta Lake, that is possible. So in HD Insight, is a, it is a Hortonworks cluster, Hadoop cluster, you know what they are using. And at the top of uh, that cluster, the Spark recent version is made available. OK, and it allows me uh, doing this Delta Lake or this Lake House platform implementation. At the uh, another within the another service also Spark Engine is available and that another service is ML service. So there also, so this issue is not yet resolved. That's why otherwise I would have shown to you uh, how to you know create a dashboard also. So going back. There is one more service. 
called as a synapse analytics. In the synapse analytics, synapse analytics is the umbrella term. In synapse analytics, there is a data warehouse. There is a serverless warehouse also. There is a Spark compute engine also. But till to the date, the Spark compute engine in synapse analytics is with a version 2.4. OK, and as it is old version, OK, it is not able to support Delta Lake. Some features of Delta Lake anyway it is supporting, but otherwise the end-to-end -end development of Delta Lake is not possible there. It can read the data from data format, OK, but it cannot. We cannot use it to design bronze layer, silver layer and uh, gold layer. That is not possible. Only delta format can be read, OK, and uh, we can populate data frame from the delta format. That is what they are. They have made possible there. So Databricks Lakehouse platform, OK, is available in Databricks only. Uh, sorry, this Lakehouse platform is available in uh, data bricks only and it is not yet available in other spark versions. Data bricks SQL. Which can query the tables created in spark and maybe it is delta table. OK, and uh, can be used to uh, create a you know, dashboard uh, out of the visuals on those tables. So geared towards data analytics who work primarily with SQL queries and BI tools. Allows you to run quick ad hoc SQL queries on your data lake. OK, so quick ad hoc SQL queries. So you can just type the query and you can you know, pull the data and on uh, pooled data. OK, you can uh, run uh, different visuals. Supports multiple visualization types. Queries run on fully managed SQL endpoints. So SQL endpoint is something you know uh, which allows us to uh, run these queries being outside of the data bricks. Dashboards let you combine visualization and text to share inside drawn from your queries. Alerts notify you. When a field returned by the query meets the threshold, so we may design, we can design alerts which will be continuously monitoring uh, aggregated values what we are receiving. And in case if that aggregated value is ext extending the threshold, then we may uh, raise the alert. So that is also possible. Integrates with Azure databases to pull the data from. It not only can pull the data from Spark tables. It can pull the data from Azure databases, stores, Synapse Analytics, Cosmos DB, Data Lake Store, Blob Storage, and Power BI. So again, you know, Databricks SQL is entirely different kind of arrangement. Okay, but why I'm talking um, uh, about it here, that this Databricks SQL can be combined with a Delta Lake uh, tables, and you can design uh, the dashboards from uh, of the data you are receiving from Delta Lake tables. Provides enterprise gate Azure security, including Azure Active Directory integration, role based controls, and SLS. So, all those features are also available there. So, having said that, in today's session, uh, this is this is a home uh, homepage of uh, Databricks SQL. In today's session, we have seen what exactly Lakehouse is. Why do we need a lake house specifically? We did have, you know, data warehouse. We did have data, data lake like arrangements uh, earlier. So what differently does the Delta Lake is offering to me? And there I have brought a very important point for your understanding that, uh, you know, uh, the implementation of Lambda or Kappa like architectures have become damn simple. You know, if you try to implement through uh, Delta Lake. So all the complexities to implement those architectures have been taken care here. And acid properties, what they are offering here, you know that those properties are making the job uh, really damn simple for implementing 
uh, stream data processing pipeline and batch data processing pipeline to work uh, intermingling with each other or cohesively with each other. So that is the significance of this. Uh, house our data like uh, as on today and the topic is extremely important in the sense that the days are not far away that you will keep this you will receive many such projects where you will have to have this implemented the days are not far away so get up and ready on uh, this uh, new emerging technology okay and uh, uh, be a first bird, early bird, okay, in this uh, era. And uh, definitely, uh, whoever be the early bird benefits a lot by different means, okay, to be early bird. So I am Chandrasekhar Deshpande here, hereby, you know, conclude my discussion and conclude my session, okay. Thanks for your cooperation, okay. Hope we will keep meeting soon. So that's all from my side. Thanks once again to everybody.